Mail call. This one is from Pete from Down Under. He uh, sent me his fuse wire to test out. So we will see what he is using. Hope I didn't cut right through the middle. Nice. Sweet. Thanks for the cards. Okay, he's got two different types here. The old stuff, which is a uh, winding wire, and the new stuff, which looks like a tinned, a tinned wire, and a little bit thinner. The old winding wire, 0.25 millimeters, and the new stuff, 0.19. Okay, YouTube, what is up? Um, let the fuse testing commence. I don't know, I just made that shit up. Um, anyway, so I have the new um, testy thingy all ready to go. I did have to make a couple of more modifications because, uh, or since I use shorter wire and thicker wire on the 5 volt rail, of course, there was no voltage drop at all. And the voltage drop on the 3 volt rail was more like a half a volt. So um, what I ended up doing was just making a longer run, I guess, if you will. And I just tested it a minute ago, and it does do voltage drop. And uh, so it seems to be working great now. Okay, so we are going to do um, a couple of different tests. We're going to do the, uh, the twisted pair, or I like to say the twisted sisters. Uh, I think he said he was going to use that next, so I will do some testing on that. And I am going to be using the 10 gauge wire. Oh no, I'm going to be using the 12 gauge wire. And I'm not sure if he's going to go thicker than that, or if he's going to go thinner. So I just went with the middle for 12 gauge, and that is 2 millimeter wire. And I'll show you what we have down here. Okay, so this is the 12 millimeter wire uh, twisted pair. Um, I just went ahead and made four of them, so it would be a little bit quicker for me. But I do have these two right here are of the new fuse wire that he's going to be using, and these are the old. I'm just going to compare the two. So for one test with the old stuff, I'm going to do just the alligator clip. And then the second one, I'm going to add some magnets on there for more thermal mass and then again for the new wire i'll do one with just the alligator clip and then i will move the magnets over for that one and see if there's any difference okay i will move this over to the oh i do got to show you one other modification i made sorry about all the mess over here i've been kind of working on this all day just to get everything as good as i possibly could i did have the computer fan sitting right over here that wasn't moving enough air to keep this wire cool so what i did is kind of rigged up a uh I don't know, some PVC pipe and a like a rubber cup link that you could attach PVCs together. And I used the actual hair dryer fan inside there. Uh, of course, the only thing, it's really fucking loud. <sighs> Turn it on and off. It's on its own uh, power supply. I'm just using a uh, laptop computer power supply or 18.5 volt. Not that that makes any difference or not. The only thing is I had to create more uh, resistance so I could get the correct voltage drop for the test. Oh, of course, um, I did do one other thing is I added these little hold downs uh, so I can put the wire wherever I need to. And this one's kind of loose so I can uh, create the necessary fuse gap if I need to. Okay, so I'll set this up and we'll get the testing going. Peter said that his fuse gap is uh, less than one centimeter, so I'm going to do, we'll do like, uh, I don't know, seven and, well, we'll see what this is real quick. I just talked too much. That's pretty much it now. 7.13 millimeters. So which is what, like three quarters of a centimeter or something like that? Uh, so we'll go with this first and see what we got. And of course, it's probably going to be jumpy because the nail, of course, likes to weld itself to the wire.
Okay, I was able to short it out and my computer power supply did blow it. Okay, so that was the old wire and it took at least 19 amps for plenty amount of time, but the wire up here of course gets screamingly red hot. Okay, this will be the same uh, old wire with uh, more mass, so it'll probably handle more amperage. Okay. Okay, uh, I shorted it out and of course it went up to 30. Um, I did, however, break my uh, wire up here, so I will have to pause and replace it real quick. Okay, and we're back. And we are down to the next wire, and this one is the new wire that he's going to be using. And this gap is 7.51 millimeters, and I left the magnets on since they were already on there for the good old thermal mass. All right, we will move on to the next one. Okay, uh, this test, of course, is the new fuse wire, and this gap is set to 7.03 millimeters. All right, here we go. Okay, it seemed like the thermal mass of the batteries did have an effect on it, or the connection was not as good on this test. Uh, maybe I'll redo this test and, and make sure. Okay, and we're back, and this is the new wire. This is going to be a retest, uh, just in case the last one was compromised by uh, not a good connection, and, or, or if it was a good connection, the thermal mass of the magnets uh, did affect the amperage. Okay, so we'll give it a test real quick. Contact. Okay, I believe that one popped right at 19 amps. I'll go ahead and throw the magnets on for the next one and we'll test it again. Okay, uh, same test. It is a 7 millimeter gap uh, just with magnets. Contact. Okay, this time around it looked like it still popped around 19 amps. Okay. This is going to be the same test, but it is with the 14 gauge wire, and that is 1.63 millimeters. Uh, this is a 7.21 millimeter gap. All right, here we go. Okay, it definitely blows at 19 amps. Okay, this will be the next one with the 14 gauge uh, twisted wire with the magnets on the uh, alligator clip. 
Um, I have to turn the alligator clip sideways because it, it seems to hold a little bit better so the actual fuse is harder to see in the video. Okay, here we go. Okay, it does seem that the magnets do have a part, so whichever way you guys would like to take that, you know, take that however you like. You know, you can relate it to a battery however you like, with or without the magnets. I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. I've had this idea in my head probably since I made my little battery build video about how I'm going to do my bus bars, but I kind of like the way those twisted wires look. It's pretty nice. Like uh, Peter said, it's going to be real cheap and real easy to do. I've had this thought of something that I wanted to try, and I wanted to know what your guys' thoughts are, so let me know what you think. It is copper tubing. This copper tubing is for um, like your refrigerator, the water line that goes up there. It's pretty cheap. Well, here, here's my other theory or thought on it is DC voltage travels on the outside of the wire. So you kind of want a lot of surface area. This has a lot of surface area. The outside uh, diameter is 6.35 millimeters and the wall thickness is 0.6 millimeters so of course you got the outside surface and the inside surface but I also remember reading probably in 2006 time frame that hospitals used to or they still do of course I don't know I don't work there or anything like that they use copper pipes for their backup systems that's just something that I could have swore I read maybe back around 2006 time frame when I first started with my battery back up over there. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm going to go ahead and solder one of uh, Peter's fuses on here and give it a test real quick just to see what it does. Let's do that. That's a 7.07 .07 millimeter fuse gap. Contact. Okay, Peter, I hope that was to your satisfaction. I believe this new testy thingy here is uh, working out pretty good. It seemed like most of the time it would pop right around 19 amps. Trying to hold it there as long as I can. Of course, my, my nail starts to get hot and then it starts burning my fingers. So I might have to start wearing gloves. You think I would have learned by now? Oh, I got a whole bunch of blue lights over there. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think, or let me know if you think there's any more adjustments I need to make. Let me know what kind of uh, bus bars you guys are going to use, so that way I can kind of add that to my little arsenal over here. Also, let me know what uh, everybody's average fuse gap is, that way I can kind of include all that in here too. Yeah, if anybody else needs some uh, wire tested, I guess get a hold of me. Uh, I'll gladly test it. Might take me a couple of days to get to it, so it just depends on what I have going on here at the house. Okay, well, uh, be sure to check out the DIY Powerwall forum. That's a pretty good site. I have uh, these videos up there as well, and there's a lot of other good good information up there. And of course the DIY Powerwall Facebook page. Uh, we're all on there too. Okay, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more views, testiery videos. And we'll see you on the next one. Alright, we'll see you later. Um, of course! I'm gonna shoot that thing. Uh, um, uh, um, yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, um, 
Uh, let's see. I forgot what I was saying. Peter's wall. Uh, hi, Beyonce. Let's see, which yeah. It's a, it's, fuck, I can't even fucking talk. Um, so we're gonna do, fuck! That's like two in like one minute. Uh, with just the alligator, uh, with, oh, um.